accounting 18 expensing stock options. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, the email address and the website. The book is Cost Accounting for Dummies will be available March of 2013. And I'll be teaching a free online course, teaching the book online, that'll be an ongoing course every month. So I want to go back to a fairly complicated topic, which is stock options expensing, expensing stock options. So we need to start off by talking about what's the purpose of a stock option. The idea is to award employees for helping in the long-term growth of, in a company. And the way that happens is, is that if the employee is doing a good job and company earnings increase, it's likely that the stock price will go up as the earnings increase because the company is more attractive. And as a result, if you had stock options, which I'll explain in a minute, if you had the option to buy the stock, if the stock price is going up, the stock options value is also going up. So let me explain some terminology. I have um, options videos out there that you can go out and look at also. And let's assume one option allows the buyer to own one share of stock, to buy one share of stock just to keep it simple. The grant date is the date the employee receives and can exercise the stop, uh, stock options. And by exercise I mean <clears throat> buy it at a given price. And that given price is called the exercise or the strike price. The price the employee can purchase the stock. Par value is simply a bookkeeping entry. It's technically the price per share issue that is added to the value of common stock and anything more than par is added to additional paid in capital. And it's really a bookkeeping item. So we know how much to post to the equity account common stock. Employees are granted the right to do one of two things. The employee has the right to either exercise the stock option at the exercise price and buy the stock or allow the option to expire worthless because they don't buy the stock and the time period to exercise the option expires. Vesting you also see in my benefits pension videos is defined as the amount of ownership the employee has at any point in time and in this case the vesting is in the stock option. Some of them they have the rights to and own and some of them they may not yet. Probably the most obscure thing here is what's called an options pricing formula. It's a method to calculate the fair value of options at a point in time, and that pricing formula is based on, <coughs> excuse me, the fair market value of the stock and the amount of time before the option <coughs> expires. So let's go through an example where employees are granted stock options. So on 11X1, a company grants employees the right to buy a total for all employees of 30,000 shares of common stock. Um, we almost always think about stomach common stock when we talk about stock options. The stock has a $2 par value and a $36 exercise price, so employees can buy it at $36. On the date that we grant the options, 11X1, the market price of one share is $32 a share, so the market price is less than the exercise price when we grant the options. The options vest on 1231X4, which is actually, I should say, four years out, instead of three. I'm going to make that just to make it easy. We're going to call it 11X4, which would be three years from now, just so I can make my, keep my example the same. Three years, so X1, X2, and X3. The options expire or become worthless on 1231X9, so they've got quite a bit of time, about five years to exercise. Based on the option pricing model, the fair value market of the options, not the stock, the fair market value of an option on the grant date, 11X1, is $12 an, op an option. So all that being said, a couple of questions. Let's assume that during the year of X5, 10,000 shares of vested op stock options are exercised. So the vesting period has gone by, and now the, your, the employees are fully vested, which means 
If they choose to, they can exercise all of their stock options. And the reason we have a vesting period is because we want employees to stay at the company f for a period of time and we're we, re we are rewarding them to st for staying at the company longer and helping the company be successful. So the first question is, what's the total compensation expense for the stock options and what over what period is that compensation expense recognized? Well, to calculate the compensation expense, we take the total options shares, which were 30000 We multiply those shares by the fair value of the option on the grant date, which was 12. And if I multiply those two together, I get compensation expense A times B of $360,000. And I say in italics here that that expense would be recognized evenly over the required service period, which is a three-year vesting period. That's a debit compensation expense we debit to increase expenses, and the credit would be posted to additional paid in capital for stock options. Second part of the question is what is the amount credited to additional paid in capital when somebody actually exercises the options? Now, note the difference. This was compensation expense for all of the options. This is additional paid in capital when somebody exercises it and actually buys the stock. Okay? And the amounts are different. All of the stock options were 30,000 shares. In this example, 10,000 shares are exercised, so note the difference. So the shares purchased with options are 10,000. The additional paid in capital per share I calculate down here, our exercise price is 36, right here. And then we subtract from that our $2 par value, and that is our additional paid in capital per share. So if I take the shares purchased with the options and I multiply it by additional paid in capital per share, I get an increase in APIC, additional paid in capital of 340,000. That is in addition to the credit side of this entry, which would be a credit to additional paid in capital of 360000 So there's two steps. There's the step related to the compensation expense, which is the fair value of the option. And then there's the additional paid in capital related to the exercise price less the par value. So two different questions. What's the compensation expense to the company? Because obviously if we grant the options, we're giving something to employees that's a cost or an expense. And then when the employees actually exercise, we have additional paid in capital because these employees are buying stock just like uh, someone in the public buys the stock and we would credit additional paid in capital. That's the end of Intermediate Accounting 18. We have video textbooks, 30 minutes to an hour long, with material both on and not on YouTube. You know the YouTube channel. You can email for a complete list of videos on YouTube. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions, here's the website. And the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, is out March of 2013. And I'm teaching a free online course you can attend on a continuous basis once a month. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.